The brownish red, highly vascular thyroid gland receives blood from two pairs of arteries, the superior thyroid arteries and the inferior thyroid arteries. In this image, we can see the larynx and trachea within the neck. Remember, our thyroid gland is anterior to these structures, so would sit just about here. The superior thyroid artery, which we can now see highlighted in green, arises from the external carotid artery. It splits into an anterior branch, a posterior branch, and a lateral branch. From this lateral view of the head and neck, we can see the superior thyroid artery arising from the external carotid artery and traveling along the thyroid gland. The anterior branch supplies the anterior portion of the gland and travels towards the isthmus. The posterior branch supplies the superior and posterior portion of the thyroid gland. Finally, the lateral branch supplies the lateral portion of the thyroid gland. Moving down to the inferior thyroid artery, it often arises from the thyrocervical trunk, which comes off the subclavian artery. The inferior thyroid artery also has two branches, this time into an ascending or superior branch and an inferior branch, which supply the inferior and posterior aspects of the thyroid gland. Back to this lateral view of the head and neck, we can see the subclavian artery here and the thyrocervical trunk arising from it. The inferior thyroid artery is highlighted in green, branching from the thyrocervical trunk and traveling towards the thyroid gland. It's important to note that the superior and inferior thyroid arteries anastomose with each other, both from the same and the opposite side. About 10% of the population have an additional non-paired artery that supplies the thyroid gland called the thyroid ima artery. If present, this artery most often arises directly from the brachiocephalic trunk, but can occasionally come directly from the arch of the aorta or the right common carotid artery. Draining the thyroid gland, we have three pairs of veins. The superior, the middle, and inferior thyroid veins. All these veins emerge from a thyroid venous plexus within the gland. The superior thyroid veins, which are now highlighted in green, drain the superior aspect of the thyroid gland, and they travel very near the superior thyroid arteries. These veins travel towards the carotid sheath and drain into the internal jugular vein. The middle thyroid veins exit the lateral side of the thyroid gland and also drain into the internal jugular vein. The inferior thyroid veins are formed from the pretracheal plexus. In this image, we can see the plexus draining into one common inferior thyroid vein, which can sometimes happen. This single inferior thyroid vein will either drain into the left or right brachiocephalic vein or occasionally directly into the superior vena cava. When the inferior thyroid veins do not form a single trunk, the left drains into the left brachiocephalic vein and the right usually drains into the right brachiocephalic vein or sometimes into the superior vena cava. We'll now explore the vascular supply to the parathyroid glands, starting with the arteries. Luckily, a lot of it is quite similar to the thyroid gland. In this image, we're looking at the pharynx and the thyroid gland from a posterior view. The arteries we can see highlighted in green are the inferior thyroid arteries, arising from the thyrocervical trunk. This artery supplies the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland, and since the parathyroid glands are located on the posterior aspect, it makes sense that they get their blood supply from the inferior thyroid artery too. The venous drainage of the parathyroid glands is also shared with the thyroid gland. Blood from the parathyroid glands drains into the thyroid venous plexus and then follows the paths of the thyroid veins. The last topic we'll tackle with these glands is their innervation. The thyroid gland is innervated by both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The nerves from these systems act on the blood vessels within the gland to constrict or dilate them as needed. Nerves from all three cervical sympathetic ganglia innervate the thyroid gland. Here we can see the superior, middle and inferior cervical ganglia in the neck. The parasympathetic nervous system gets to the thyroid gland in two ways. Both of these nerves, however, arise from the vagus nerve. The first is the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve, which we can see approaching the area of the thyroid gland from the superior aspect. The second is the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which comes towards the thyroid gland from an inferior angle. Remember, both are branches of the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10. Innovation to the parathyroid glands is nice and straightforward. It only receives sympathetic innervation, which comes from the superior and middle cervical ganglia. If you found this quick anatomy or physiology video helpful, you'll enjoy our video tutorials even more. 
Click on the button and you'll see what I mean. We have hundreds of videos available to our premium members, not to mention all the fun quizzes, complete articles and atlas sections to solidify your knowledge. Click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy and physiology.